Howdy folks, we are talking early World War I today. We will talk about Plan 17, Das Schlieffenplan, and the Battle of Marne. So this is the early section of World War I. Your goal for the screencast is when you are done, you want to be able to say that you can explain the progression of World War I, how it happened early in the war, and how the war changed from a war of movement to a war of trenches. As usual, you can take notes in whatever way you see fit. So plan 17 is a French plan that would concentrate their attack on Alsace-Lorraine, which is a portion of Germany, or excuse me, yes, a portion of uh, the, the French-German borders that was very contentious, but contentious between France and Germany. And this would leave very few troops to defend the rest of the country. Plan 17 was never used, though, because the Germans attacked with the Schlieffen plan first. What's the Schlieffen plan? That's a good question. So the Schlieffen Plan was the German battle plan that was actually used and it called for a rapid mobilization of German troops and an invasion of France through Belgium. Now, as you know, because I'm sure you remember from earlier in the unit, Belgium was supposed to be a neutral country based on the Treaty of London from the mid-19th century. Germany viewed this treaty as a scrap of paper, though, didn't take it very seriously, and invaded France through Belgium. The first goal of the Schlieffen Plan is to get the French to surrender. The Germans weren't after large cities, they just wanted to take over huge amounts of land and cause the French government to surrender, because after that happened, the Germans were going to move their troops from France to Russia and defeat the Russians. And all of this would happen in six weeks, and the Germans would rule an enormous chunk of Europe. That was the plan. So what did the Schlieffen Plan look like? Well, Plan 17 called for a massing of troops in this area right here along Alsace-Lorraine, and you can see those blue lines, those are the French troops pushing into Germany. However, what the Germans did is they went through Belgium, and they, they attacked kind of behind where those French troops were because they didn't go through the German-French border. Clearly, this isn't going to go well for the French. The Schlieffen Plan is all about movement. Again, as I said before, the goal is to defeat France and then defeat Russia. And because both France and Russia were friends, they were part of the Triple Entente, this would avoid the Germans fighting a two-front war. They would end the war on the Western Front and then go fight the war on the Eastern Front. Germany felt Russia would be super slow to mobilize because, it would, number one, it was a big country, and number two, because they industrialized late, they didn't have a great rail system for moving troops and material around. The Schlieffen Plan... The Schlieffen plan failed for a few reasons. Um, one of them, though, was the Battle of Marne. And so the Battle of Marne is located in this section of France. As you can see, in order for the battle to have been fought there, the Germans would have had to advance pretty far into France with the Schlieffen plan. And initially it looked like the Schlieffen plan was going to work, but then the Battle of Marne came along. So this happens in September 1914, and it's just named after the Marne River which happened to be outside of Paris. And up to this point, as I said previously, the Germans were just smashing through Belgium. They were smashing through France. It looked like it would be just a matter of time before they conquered France. So what happened was British planes, who were used to defend their ally, the French, recognized a weaker spot in the German lines. And the French heard about this from the British, their allies, and sent huge numbers of soldiers from Paris out to the Marne in taxi cabs. Two million soldiers fought in the battle, and what the British and French did is they were able to stop the German attack, or excuse me, they were able to stop their retreat and turned around and attacked the Germans in this weak spot in their lines. Here's a picture of some of the fighting in the Battle of Marne. As you can see, these are men on the ground, huddled down, shooting at each other. Not in trenches, you will note. Some carnage from the Battle of Marne. What happened was half a million people died. Most importantly though, the French and the British troops were able to stop the advance of German troops into France. This ends the possibility of success of the Schlieffen Plan because Germany is now no longer able to defeat France quickly. This loss really slows down the German army. They become stagnant after this because they're not moving forward. That means they will not be able to send their troops to Russia to fight the Russians after they defeat the French, which means that the Germans are going to fight a two-front war. That's going to be tough to fight enemies on both sides. 
the most important point about the Battle of Marne is that this turns World War I from a war of movement, the Schlieffen Plan's all about movement and flying really quickly through Belgium and France and then send, moving all of those troops over to fight Russia. It, it goes from a war of movement to a war of trenches because after the Battle of Marne, the soldiers on both sides create a line of trenches from the North Sea all the way down to the Alps. So all the way along this German-French border, there's a huge line of trenches that the war will be fought in for the next four years. So, your goal, you should be able to explain the early progression of World War I and how the war changed from a war of movement to a war of trenches. If you can do that, great. If not, go back and rewatch sections of the screencast, and you'll be all set. Thanks.